All right, <laughs> thank, thank you, you Patty. Patty. All right, coronavirus Q&A time where we get to separate, hopefully, the facts from the fiction and the fear that are out there. We are joined by emergency room Dr. Robert A. Frolickstein. Uh, doctor, thank you for joining us as you do every Thursday. We really appreciate it. I, and I, I like to start with just what are you seeing in the ER these days? So not much has changed. We're still seeing a few patients with COVID that are, that are getting admitted. Uh, but thankfully, we seem to be having more patients recover in, in our, our discharge. So overall, I think the number of hospitalized patients with COVID-19 uh, right now is down a little bit than it was uh, last week. Overall, our volumes are, are, are still significantly dropped. Uh, it's maybe started to pick up in a few days and the last few days, and that's that's good. That that uh, hopefully is an indication that makes people understand it is safe to come to the emergency department. You need to come to the emergency department if you believe you have an emergency. And speaking and speaking of the hospital, we are hearing reports that things are kind of returning back to normal in some sense, at least when it comes to uh, scheduling these non-emergency surgeries. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I'd say it is starting. The process of returning to normal is is starting, and uh, certainly the the governor uh, changed his executive order. Um, and prior to the change, it really limited any surgeries to only those that were emergent. And now it, it, it has relaxed that a bit and now necessary, but not necessarily emergent surgeries are now being uh, allowed to, uh, to proceed. We've been get, I, I know that the mayor talked about it a little bit yesterday about masks and the importance of wearing masks and that some people still aren't wearing them. And we actually get questions here about people saying, if I don't have COVID, why do I have to wear a mask? Well, it's not so much about the person wearing the mask, correct? Yeah, so I think there's a misperception out there that uh, COVID is just is floating around in the air. And, and that's really not true. It probably does float for a very short distance from someone that has been infected with it, but then it quickly settles. And it probably settles within six feet of that person that is emitting the virus. And so that's the reason, rationale behind the six foot rule. So, but the, the masks are really not necessarily intended to prevent me wearing a mask that it doesn't have the infection from getting the virus. The masks are really more designed for if I have it and don't know it to prevent it from spreading around. Now there is some protection for me if I don't have it and I'm within six feet of someone who does and they're not wearing a mask. Well, that's better than not wearing a mask, both of us not wearing a mask. So there's, it does go both ways a little bit, but it's mostly to protect everyone else in case I might be infected with the virus. You know, we've heard a lot about, and I think Dr. Anthony Fauci at the White House uh, mentioned this today about the second or third potential wave that could be coming months from now. How is the medical community here bracing or preparing should something like that come to pass? Uh, so certainly, you know, we're all concerned about the second wave and when that will be. We're very, very hopeful that it won't be, uh, you know, anytime in the next uh, few months. It might hopefully wait till the fall and that will give us uh, time to really perfect the strategies we have in place already to keep the healthcare uh, workforce healthy as well as any um, patients who have to come to the hospital healthy. Uh, it'll allow us to build up our, our, our supplies of PPE. And probably most importantly, hopefully it will allow all the brilliant people out there working on treatments and vaccines to have some time to develop some effective treatments. Absolutely. Time is of the essence right now. Dr. Robert Frolickstein, emergency room doctor, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, you're going to join us tonight at 9. We're going to take viewer questions. And I've already got a sneak peek of one of them. It has to do with pets and COVID-19. So I'm going to throw that one at you tonight at 9. And then, we'll, of course, we'll have it on the night beat. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. We'll be right back. Welcome back to tonight's edition of Coronavirus Q&A, where we try to take the facts out of the fear and some of the fiction that's out there. Joined by emergency room doctor Robert A. Frolickstein. Uh, thank you for joining us as you do every Thursday, doctor. And uh, I, w I, I always like to start with what you're seeing in the emergency room right now when it comes to COVID. Thanks, Steve. Uh, we're seeing a uh, yeah, we are still seeing a few cases of, uh, of COVID that are getting admitted. It's pretty steady over the last several weeks. Um, kind of the good news is that we're starting to see 
quite a few people recovering. Amazing work being done by uh, especially our ICU teams and people are recovering and getting to go home. So the overall number of patients in the hospital with COVID right now is, is I think it's less than it was this time last week. Are you still, see, you, you've been concerned that you're not seeing normal ER patients, I guess, you know, the, the heart attacks, the chest pains, those kind of people. Have, are, you, are you worried that you're still not seeing them or has that started to get a little bit back to normal? Yeah, I mean, it's starting to maybe a little bit better, but we're still seeing about half as many patients as we normally do. Now, the number of percentage of those patients that are very, very sick is a little higher. So uh, uh, I'm very hopeful that people are, that really need to be there are coming in. Uh, and just still remember that it, it's safe. We have processes in place to um, it, it put you in a safe area. If you have no symptoms suggestive of COVID, uh, it's very safe to come in if you need to. All right, let's get to some of these viewer questions. How are hospitals being impacted with elective surgeries being allowed? Obviously, the governor making that decision last week. Yeah, and uh, I think they're all, uh, I think, very, very happy. Uh, there were a lot of pay people out there that had surgeries planned and, and important things, cancer surgeries and those types of things that got put on hold because of this. And now this gives uh, those those patients, uh, those doctors in the hospital an opportunity to, to complete those surgeries. And again, uh, you know, the restrictions were put in place because really not because it was unsafe to be in the hospital, but it was it was to conserve our personal uh, protective equipment, our PPE, and prevent exposure of the healthcare workers to, to uh, potential patients that were asymptomatic carriers. Well, well, now we, we thankfully, I think, are, are not going to see the huge peaks that we've seen in New York, New York and New Orleans, and we're going to have enough PPE, and we have processes in place to keep both the patients and the healthcare workers safe. So that allows us to safely open up and start doing some surgeries again. There's also some concern about whether there'd be enough hospital beds, right? Is that why also why elective surgeries were, were kind of put on hold? That, that's correct. That was another part of that uh, order. And, and e even to do these surgeries now, I think you have to uh, look at how many beds are available and make sure that there's still going to be an adequate number of beds uh, for any COVID patient that would need one. All right. This next question from viewers seems to be the most popular, especially over the last few days with the reports of house cats having it and some animals in the zoo having COVID-19. Uh, what does this mean? How are they being affected? But the bigger question to me is, can you get COVID-19 from your pet? So the, first of all, you're assuming then the pet has the illness. So, so there's no way that you're going to get it from a pet that doesn't have the illness. So I think the first step would be to keep the pet safe. But I guess in theory, yes, I think in theory you could transmit the virus from a pet to a human. I just think the odds of that are so overwhelmingly low that it's not really something that we ought to be worrying about right now. Are you surprised that you're seeing as many pets as you are get COVID-19? Um, yeah, you know, I, I'm not a vet uh, or a virologist. I know that there is some back and forth transmission of these coronaviruses, which is the big family of this virus. Uh, between animals and humans, um, but I don't, you know, I don't know how common that is, so I, yeah. I don't know enough to be surprised, I guess, right? Yeah. Now. All right, next question. Yesterday, Metro Health officials spoke about how there are only four FDA-approved antibody tests, but there are actually 90 on the market. Only four of them are approved. What dangers come from taking an antibody t test that's not approved by the FDA? Well, there's no danger to the person, the danger is in inaccurate results, and, and they just haven't been validated. So uh, when the, if a test would come back positive, we don't know on uh, many of these tests if that truly means a patient has those antibodies. Uh, and, and it just takes a while to validate these types of tests, uh, and I think the FDA uh, is working through that and validating as many as they can as the fast as yeah, the mayor yesterday made a big deal about masks and about wearing them for your protection, but also for other people's protection. How important is it for everyone to wear masks while they're out in public and closer 
in closer proximity than you might be if you're at home or in your car or something like that? Um, I, I, I think it's very important. Uh, again, the virus isn't just floating around out in the air. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get it walking to the mailbox. Uh, but if you walk into the mailbox and there's somebody else there that has the virus while you're there, and you're within six feet, you might get the virus. And but if that person's wearing a mask and you're wearing a mask, it greatly, greatly reduces the uh, chances of transmission of that virus. All right, like I like to do, I'm going to give you the final word here. What would you like our viewers to know tonight? So uh, again, these are these are tough times, and some of these things like wearing masks and some of these restrictions on our activities, I think I think they're going to have to last uh, quite a long time. You know, we're, we're we hear these reports and we're worried about the second wave. We don't know when that's coming, but hopefully it won't be till fall, and we'll develop some effective treatments, um, but those, these types of things are what's going to keep that second wave farther down the road and keep it, again, from being a big peak. People have done an amazing job in this community, and, you know, I, I don't know, I hope, I'm hoping we're past our peak, but even if the peak's still a week away, our peak is not going to be anywhere near some of the places that are harder hit, and I, I think that's a credit to this community. Thank you, doctor. I appreciate you taking the question on pets, too, even though you're not a vet. I'm going to try and come up with a botany question next week, maybe about plants or something for you and put you on the spot there. I'm just kidding. Doctor, thank you for your time. I appreciate it every Thursday. We'll be right back.